Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm continuing my Sussex border walk. I'm back in Rustington. In the previous episode, in Rustington, I was up at the old manor house, which is just up there. I am working my way now to Littlehampton, and to do that, there are several ways. I could go um, westwards along the town road and head there, but I'm trying to stick to the border, which would be I suppose logically down by the sea so I'm going to go back down to the sea and see what I can see on the way down and there are some interesting things to look out for so as I make my way down there's a property here from 17 something or other I saw on the roof behind me with the thatched roof but I walk down here and we see more of these um, flint properties now immediately on my right hand side, which is westwards of the road, there is this property which has been built more recently in 1998 it says. So, and it's actually made a good effort to keep in with the style. But next door we get to Hobbs Farm, 1680. Now, that's old. It's a beautiful house and it's a, it's a very lovely area but unfortunately it seems to be marred this road that was once a very quiet road like so many in history is uh, so busy just trying to film the properties around here is an absolute nightmare cars race through so 1690 and opposite it seems there's some cottages there now I don't know but when you look on old maps, it looks like this whole area was one farm with a little track that used to go through it. And another reason that makes me think that, and just remember, I'm not a historian, so I don't know anything about all of this, but there is here next to me, what again on old maps is just known as the barn, the old barn. And you can see now it's been converted into dwellings. <laughs> We can see too much of that because we can't go any further. A, there's a big wall around it and also we are surrounded here on another private estate. Very exclusive. So I'm going to continue down towards the coast on this December cold and grim day again and as we come down we get see there's more modern properties which um, I'm sure are very nice for the people who live in them but not so interesting to me from the heritage point of view but I'm now about halfway down we come to an interesting house here called Cudlow House it's a big house and there's a couple of things I want to tell you about this. First is the observations when you look on old maps. Is now there's a, next to this house, there's this sort of cut through into what used to be the grounds of the house. Um, so all of this, it says residence access only, Cudlow Garden, was um, part of the garden. And I believe there was a swimming pool at one point. But behind me, Cudlow House itself was owned by the Llewellyn Davis family and famous author J.M. Barry used to visit frequently and in fact the family that lived here the Llewellyn Davis family became the inspiration for the Darling family in the novel Peter Pan. It is a shame when you see these rather beautiful houses set in their own grand, having at some point sold off that land. I don't know whether it was the money was needed for, who knows, death duties. That would seem to be a big thing that people had to pay for a lot of. And now, I mean, a lot of people have got homes here, so one can't really complain too much. But it's, it is nice to think that these houses retain 
something of their grounds which reflect also the the I don't know the the beauty of the house at the same time whereas there sadly they ha have lost it but for J.M. Barry it must have been magnificent to come and visit and perhaps wander down to the coast imagine conceive and and write some of his wonderful works a place of inspiration then for Rustington and that's true for the next property I want to have a look at a place of ins inspiration for a famous hymn that we all know Another private, private estate. It's full of them around here. Oh, and just now as I was setting up the camera, something most peculiar, a woman came up, didn't say anything, just got out her phone, took a picture of me, about, uh, I don't know, 10, 20 feet away, turned round and walked off. Now then, we're off to Knight's Croft. Knight's Croft. What a beautiful Sussex house with its hanging tiles, its brick, its uh, elongated um, frontage and the bay windows and big chimneys too. It was here that Sir Hugh Parry composed the music for William Blake's famous poem, I suppose, and turned it into a hymn, Jerusalem in there. So uh, whenever you think about England and you think of that tune, that's where it was composed. I'm back down at the seafront now. Come down sea lane all the way down to the end and you hit the channel here. And then the road turns and heads that way towards Littlehampton. But I haven't quite finished with this corner because in 1805, just up here in front of me, where there are now flats, was Rustington Mill or Rustington uh, Seafield Mill. And it was just on this corner here. There were a few other outbuildings at the time they've all gone now and the mill operated until well until 1908 when there was a storm which damaged it quite badly and then in 1913 it was finally demolished there are flats here now but after it was demolished a convalescent home for children was erected on this site but on the lawn certainly from above and if I was allowed to fly a drone it's possible at the right time of year you can still see where the roundhouse was positioned because the grass doesn't grow 100% so I'm told and actually if you even look on Google Maps you can still see that too. The roundhouse was originally black and when the post mill was erected it was white but it was later tarred black and the pictures all show of it black. The reason I think it was probably tarred is because you've got a lot of salt air probably doing a lot of damage to the wood coming in and the tar would have um, protected it a lot. It was I think owned by a chap called Robinson but it was operated by a couple of uh, brothers, the Graves brothers, who looked after it for a while. But sadly there is uh, no sign of this. I believe in the area there was about four mills. I think there was another mill on the other side of the road that was there a very short time and then it, it moved away somewhere else. Just 
is taking a bit of refuge from the from the shelter at the moment which uh, is here at the end of the road and it overlooks the the sea and I can't help thinking about the uh, children's convalescent home where children who were ill would come down here and have a bit of um, well a, a bit of fresh air a bit of health a bit of looking after they probably needed it at the beginning of the 20th century after the mill had collapsed um, unfortunately it's all flats now so the kids don't do that but you can imagine them having that uh, freedom to come down onto the beach here and and just enjoy the sea especially in the spring and summer perhaps not so good in the cold winter but you know who knows just hoping that the days ahead will brighten up but it is winter now before we go very close to Littlehampton which will be my next port of call and I'm very much looking forward to exploring that I did actually have an office believe it or not many many years ago in Littlehampton I wonder if that's still there convalescence is the last uh, theme really in this video as we make our way just before the entrance into Littlehampton I'm nearly there along this stretch just uh, to the north of the beach here up until I suppose I don't know the 30s this was all open land farmland probably but it was all open and what a lovely stretch now of course the uh, property developers have come in and of course there's as you can see loads and loads of flats and why not you know you can't blame people for wanting to live by the coast of course we're coming up to the Russington convalescent home and this is a magnificent building this is a very beautiful building right on the seafront again another home for convalescing this um, was built by Sir Henry Harbin in 18, uh, 1897 I think it was uh, if I've got that wrong I'll shove it on the screen um, the architect was Frederick Wheeler I don't know if these names mean anything to you but Sir Henry was a member of the Carpenters Company which is still in existence and I think for ages it was a sort of guild up in London doing good deeds for people who worked with wood obviously but this was for working men to come and convalesce if they'd had an accident or a terrible illness and again down on the seafront here you can imagine the fresh air back at that period of time how wonderful it would have been no flats as I said before just a wonderful place and in the summer months when it was warm um, magnificent a beautiful um, property it's closed at the moment due to Covid but I think it still operates in that way it was uh, modernized in 1970 apparently and, and now it probably looks very swishing they'd love to go in and have a look so if anyone knows how to organize that do let me know but a beautiful place in brown and red brick with um, stone on the outside wonderful building anyway it's raining and I'm getting cold Littlehampton is this way I shall be making my way there in the next episode and exploring that so thank you so much for watching this one don't forget to follow like and subscribe become a patron please support what I do it's the only way I make enough money to make these videos I'll see you next time take care and thanks for watching bye bye